This is Matt Dabbs at discipleship.org and I'm with Bobby Harrington, also of discipleship.org. And I'm excited to talk about the uh, resources that we have at discipleship.org. There's a lot of things that we have on our different platforms that we want to explain in uh, this podcast. And so welcome, Bobby. Hey, Matt, good to be with you. Welcome, everyone. I'm so grateful for you to be listening to us. And now I, I just want to say something up front. It can seem like we're just promoting ourselves in this. And that is not our desire. Although I don't think there's anything wrong in the right way of promoting yourself. But here's what we want to do on this podcast. We have a lot of resources, a lot more than a person might realize that are free, that help people to make disciples. And so if you're driving around listening to us, or if you're watching on YouTube, in fact, if you're watching on YouTube or on our website, Matt's going to show you these resources. So it's much easier for you to go to the website. For those who are just listening, we're going to describe it well enough that I think you can find it all. But the reality is that we have a treasure trove of resources on disciple making that are actually hard to come by. And we're just excited about, we're grateful to God. And we just want to be good stewards to share these with other people. Yeah. So, true. so Matt, if you want to, maybe the best way for us to proceed, just ask me questions and I'll, I'll take everybody on a guided tour. Okay. So as, as we're beginning, I just want to remind everybody of the mission of discipleship.org. Our mission is to champion Jesus style disciple making. And what that means is we envision a day and we won't stop until, say, 16% of churches in the country are grounded in and practicing Jesus style disciple making. You know, 16% uh, is a tipping point in a culture. So, so that's why we want to do that. But it's all about Jesus style disciple making. And for our listeners, in case you've never heard the delineation, let me make a careful delineation. Discipleship typically refers to being a disciple. It's literally the state of being a disciple. And oftentimes it's, it's about knowledge and content and those kinds of things. For more enlightened people, it's also about, you know, relationships and all the components of a discipling environment. And that is a different thing. It's like being a disciple versus making disciples. Now, discipleship.org has both, but we tend to focus much more heavily on the focus on making disciples or disciple making. So Matt has, for those of you listening, Matt has the landing page at our website there. And I just want to mention blogs first. We have innumerable blogs on, again, most of them are disciple making. And so pretty much every day, Monday through Friday, there's going to be a new blog up and it'll be by partners to discipleship.org, <clears throat> the various authors who are committed to our 10 affirmations. Those affirmations are listed on about discipleship.org. And I just want you to know, they're just really good stuff. We, we often take them from other places. They've published them with their permission, and we repost them on discipleship.org, or we create our own. And it's just good quality stuff. Most of them are inspirational, helpful. And, you know, I just want to encourage you to go there and, and look regularly for inspiration on our topics. And that's really good. And, you know, one of the things that if you can just go to, to discipleship.org and you go to the resources tab at the top, it's, it really gives you um, the breakdown of everything we're going to talk about in this discussion. So as we kind of continue down the webpage from the blogs, we get to our eBooks. Yeah. So we have, I think it's over 20 eBooks mm -hmm. and these, these eBooks, again, I'm I'm just trying to describe the quality. They're free. All of them are free. Let me give you a couple of examples of of why you want to look at them. One is Matt's got the if you're watching, 
the master plan of evangelism says revisiting the master plan of evangelism. That was an interview with Robert Coleman that we put in an ebook. And we went back 55 years after he published the master plan of evangelism, which if you've not read that, it's the gold standard on Jesus' method of disciple making. And we interviewed Robert Coleman about it. We summarized the book in that ebook. So really helpful stuff. On the far left-hand side of what Matt's showing us right now is the Becoming a Disciple Maker audiobook. Well, there's the book and the audiobook, which is just a really succinct, clear way of explaining and helping people to understand what it means to grow, to become not just a disciple maker, but if you're on staff or leadership in a church, becoming um, a maker of disciple makers. At the end of the day, Jesus didn't just make disciples. In fact, he focused more on making disciple makers of Peter, James, John, and the other 12 disciples. So uh, just want to recommend those books to you. We now not only have normal ebooks that can be a, like a complete book, it could also be summaries, like the master plan, which makes it easy to read, or it could be audio. So we have free audio books up there. Becoming a Disciple Maker is an audio book. The National Study on the State of Disciple Making is an audio book. And uh, we're able to do this because of uh, artificial intelligence makes it much easier. In fact, I would recommend one book to listen to because it's a steal of a deal. It's the whole book created by Curtis Erskine called Created to Be Like God, which is a focus on how when we're making disciples, the real goal, there's two goals in all disciple making. On the front end, leading people to place their faith in Jesus. And then on the back end, leading people or discipling people to become more and more like Jesus, to grow, to spiritually grow and become like Jesus. So we disciple lost people. It begins at hello. We disciple lost people to salvation. And then we disciple saved people to increasing degrees of Christ likeness. Now, one other thing is there in the ebooks, and it's a really good tool. We've only created three of them so far, but I anticipate us creating more. And these are visual guides. So, for example, we created a visual guide on the national study on the state of disciple making. Like, if you don't want to read the whole thing, just look at this visual guide. We have one on disciple making culture which uh, is a fantastic visual guide. I'm using that this coming Monday. I'll be in Indianapolis meeting with like church leaders from like 20 uh, churches, and I'm going to go through the visual guide because it's so helpful, easy to understand, and that's the great advantage of eBooks. Matt, do you want to add anything to what I've been saying about that? Yeah, I would like to, if I can just take a second to even just pull one of those up and share the screen on one of those like Disciple Shift 10 minute ebook. Let me just grab that really quick. And I know if you're listening, that makes that a little bit hard. Yeah, um, way to go, Matt. Describe that. You got to um, bear in mind those listening. Yeah. So it's basically like an infographic, right? That's kind of peeled out over several pages. What is this, 22 pages? It's kind of yeah. giving a sense or two about each of the main points. Well, for those of us who, you know, like books with lots of pictures and that are short, these epitomize short, lots of pictures, flip through it. In fact, Todd Wilson, my friend, used to call them flip books. But then we found out there's actually a specific genre of books called flip books, where it's more like motion pictures. So these aren't motion pictures, but you flip through them and can really enjoy them. Yes. So there are a couple dozen, like, well, just about two dozen of those, and they've had lots of downloads. I mean, what, probably 100,000? Over 100,000. Yeah. 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 They get a lot so, of traction. So we got the blogs there. Of course, all those are free, and we aggregate and bring together. And uh, what are we looking at now, Matt? This is the podcast. That okay, let's talk about podcasts, because I'm so thankful to God for the exposure. We have, I think it's a million and a half podcast downloads. And one of the things I'll tell people is that, hey, if you're 
teaching at the National Disciple Making Forum, or you're doing a podcast and you're thinking, hey, normally maybe a lot of people don't show up, don't forget that it becomes a podcast and we have a really high number of listeners, typically 1,200 and above people who download and listen to each of our podcasts. And uh, we have the podcasts are a combination of the sessions at our National Disciple Making Forum. So these would be the breakout sessions, and those are just audio. But also, Matt, and you've done a lot of this, different visual podcasts that go on YouTube and other places. And so we, we think it's really good. And what we're doing right now is, as a team, we're trying to help everybody with disciple-making culture, understanding what it is, the key elements of it, and how to be effective at it. So our podcasts, eBooks, and all the things we're pushing right now are focused around that. And there's about two podcasts a week that typically go out. Okay. And now so we're at book books. I call them book books. And what we mean by that is print books published typically by Zondervan. And we have a, a actually we have some really good books. If you're looking to get something, say you're going to go on a vacation or you want to go on a spiritual retreat or whatever it is, and you want to read a book, of course, you got the eBooks, but sometimes we just want a, a book that's published, we hold in our hands. And so all of the books, like all of the material on discipleship.org is going to be aligned around our 10 affirmations. So let me just mention a couple of books that Matt has in front of us. One of them is The Discipleship Gospel, which is by Bill Hull and Ben Sobels. And I got to tell you, that's an important book because it talks about how uh, Jesus calls us to both salvation and discipleship by the gospel. Another book is a book that I wrote with my co-minister, Josh Patrick, called The Disciple Maker's Handbook. And I've got a lot of good feedback on that. It's one of those books with a lot of good stories in it of people discipling people and some principles. One of the, what somebody told me recently, actually, you know, I start into it, I'm a little bashful to share, but they said that the section in our, there that summarizes the gospel and the Bible was the most helpful chapter they'd ever read on that. And this is a guy, ministerial staff on a pretty big church in Virginia. So that was super encouraging. And then we have things like Brandon Gindon's book, Stay the Course, helping church leadership to have structures and practices to help everything be about disciple making. And then one of my favorite is Dave Clayton's Revival Starts Here. One of the things we push in disciple making is that if you have a foundation of fasting and prayer, your disciple making is going to be a whole lot better than it would be without it. So these books are, we're really grateful for these books, and uh, I commend them to all of our uh, listeners uh, and those who are joining us on YouTube. Yeah, those really are good. I think I've read everything on the screen here and have been really blessed by it. I've probably read a couple of these, maybe a couple of times even, and have, have used them in, in a lot of different contexts. I point people to them regularly. And the Hey, sometimes, well. like the Disciple Maker's Handbook, I came back to that the other day. Number one, I, what the person that shared with me super encouraged me, but also sometimes I'll read them and I go, yeah, that's really good. Yeah. <laughs> that that was the part Josh what we wrote, wrote there. Right? That was really good. I didn't realize. I didn't was remember. That, but that was that, good. Was that Josh's part or your part? <laughs> yeah. That's funny. So we have some free tools here also. And yeah. The, Matt, so hey, Matt, I'm going to reverse it on you because several of those tools are up there. You created them. So okay. walk us through. So you're pulling a Uno because card on these me. Are, by the way, when Matt, we say free tools for those listening. What we're talking about are helpful little things like how do you do discovery Bible study or something like that that you can download, and it's just a helpful tool. So, Matt, tell us about that. Yeah, so the first one here is the Discipleship Pathway. That's from Doug Burrier of Sustainable Discipleship, and it's just a very simple little guide that basically just says there are, it's not a cookie cutter, but some predictable steps that people tend to go through and the kinds of activities that it takes to kind of get them to that next step down the pathway. 
Uh, what is Discovery Bible Study? Is this a simple little guide that I wrote up on DBS and uh, actually introduced to DBS by, by Bobby. I really appreciate that. That's made a big impact on our ministry over the last several years. Three types of groups is exactly what that states. And very, very, again, these are just all very practical things. Uh, the 10 forward thinking trends, I believe that gets some updates at times, right? Yeah. Yeah. We typically yeah. try to update that every year, every, Sometimes year. Yes. every year and a half. We typically update it when we're seeing a significant change in disciple making. Yes. And of course, this has also been a major theme with the disciple making culture. And then now the intentionality that we've been talking about for so long. And I'm, I'm probably maybe a little less familiar with that resource. Is that Brandon Ginton? Yeah. So let me help uh, for those who are joining us. Uh, uh, because we're pushing disciple making culture, we actually have two uh, visual guides. There's the one there, Disciple Making Culture Visual Introduction, which is a visual introduction to Brandon Ginden's book, on disciple making culture, which is a great book, it's a great and book. it's a visual guide that helps you that raises the questions that are answered in the book. Whereas the other visual guide, just called disciple making culture, you know, a ten minute book, gets at the heart of three key things that really drive culture. So it's more of an introduction to understanding church culture. And the component of the three components are beliefs and values, number two, practices and disciplines, and number three, words and narrative. And so it's more of a, the other one's more of a basic introduction. Gotcha. And then, and Brandon's book on disciple making culture is, is excellent. I, I definitely highly recommend that book too. So we also have some of the premium content here with the digital access passes from past forums. Yeah, yeah, Matt, let me delineate that. In fact, for those who are watching on YouTube, if you could scroll up just a little bit, we have free videos. For example, Alice Matagora, who lives in California, is a great disciple maker with the navigators. It, you know, hers is identifying and overcoming the pitfalls in discipleship. But you have just a, you know, a, a group of videos that you can watch at any time. We try to have good interviews with disciple makers. And so that's great to watch. And now below that would be the premium content. And only some of it is showing right now, Matt. And uh, we're going to get that updated. And by the time you're listening to it, it should be updated. We have courses like the Holistic Disciple Making Masterclass. I've got to tell you, Matt, that is a fantastic resource. Of course, I was a part of it, but I just remember when we did it, we got the nation's leading disciple makers. It went really well. It was super uh, high quality and meaty. And people pay a little bit for that. It was created during COVID, but it's timeless. Like Jesus' method of disciple making doesn't change. And the principles that these key leaders talked about and the sequence of it all is fantastic. We have like the disciple making pastor. We have the video course revisiting the master plan of evangelism, and then the digital access to our previous national disciple making forums are available. This is this is I think on off everything on our website. This is the only stuff we charge for, and it's a pretty minimal fee. And uh, we're just doing that to to help sponsor the mission. But most of the stuff, like I said, we give free and we we don't make money on it. The people who buy our resources or who attend our national forums are actually paying for us to be able to do all these things. And then there's the Nashville City Tour videos that are free. Yes. And they are very good. If you don't mind me saying, Matt. They are really good. Yeah. No, I, I know them really, really well. I did a little bit of, of editing there that. I might've spent a little time with those videos. They're, they're really good. It's really good. You say, oh, it's free. I don't know. No, check it out. Cause it's very, very good. Yeah. Tom Rainer and uh, yeah. Chris Harper with better man, by the way, Chris Harper with better man. He's a rising star. That guy can talk about manhood, biblical manhood, like nobody's business. You got Gabe Lyons, Tom Rainer. There's some good stuff there. Yeah. That's really, really powerful. And then we also have these assessments. We don't want to miss out on those. 
Yeah, let me talk to you about those assessments, Matt. We have two of them. We have a personal disciple making assessment. And so you say, Hey, I want to be a disciple maker, or I want to, I want to know how am I doing? Like, how am I, com- how would I be doing compared with other disciple makers? Uh, and let me give you a, a third reason for the test. Taking this assessment, I don't want to call it a test, taking this assessment will actually educate you a whole lot on what it means to make disciples, and then more importantly, make disciple makers. When we originally were developing the assessment, do you know, Matt, that most people couldn't even, con- I shouldn't say most, a lot of people couldn't conceptualize that you actually don't just want to make disciples, you want to make disciple makers. So it's a great assessment for anybody who wants to get a gauge of where am I at and how can I improve. So it gives you a score of how you were in the past, how you are in the present, and based on your aspirations and what you're saying, where you're going in the future. And it helps you to develop a plan to be a really good disciple maker. So if Jesus had just made disciples, we wouldn't be here, I assume. That's right. Hey. I, I oh, almost Lord. missed it there. If he had just made disciples, but not disciple makers. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Okay. And then the last one is, and we've been pushing this a lot lately because of our focus on a disciple-making culture, but it's church disciple-making culture assessment. So you can go, in fact, I would go through that as a, as a lead minister, pastor, I might take it so that I have a feel for where my church is at. But if you get several of your leaders to take it, and then yet, you know, just assess where is our church at in terms of shifting the culture to being a disciple making church, I think that that would be good. And one of the things you have with that is a reference to the whole study on which the assessment was built. So it, again, it just becomes a great learning tool to assess how to help your church be more effective at making disciples and creating a disciple-making culture. Well, that's really good. So before we go over to switch pages to YouTube, you know, again, if you're at discipleship.org and you go to the top menu and you have resources, you see the YouTube, the eBooks, for sale books, podcast, and blog are all right there. That doesn't count the courses and some of the stuff at the free tools at the bottom, but that, that captures almost everything. And of course the events, we have the forum in there and then the past events with the did Yeah, I, I, I skipped that. Matt, can you go to the top of the landing page there for a second? Yeah, very um, top. Yeah. yeah, the very top. Notice the National Disciple Making Forum. I just want to encourage everybody, if you haven't signed up to join us, make plans and sign up to join us. Because it's literally two days of so much interaction, so much inter- encouragement, so much education and inspiration around Jesus style disciple making. And this year, like every year, we have a great lineup from Sean McDowell talking about beliefs to people like Jason Shepard from Houston talking about practices and habits. And then Shadonke Johnson from Sierra Leone and Josh. Howard from India talking about language and narrative and disciple-making culture. And we also have Ashley Catazone, who's a new gem we recently learned about, who's doing a fantastic job in the St. Louis area. She and the, the leaders at her church in really helping reach a lot of people, helping them with a discipleship gospel. And we, you know, it's a great church to visit. I I visited it personally not too long ago, and just to see the racial diversity, the diversity in terms of income and backgrounds, and how all of these people, they're just aligned around a culture of being disciples of Jesus and making disciples for Jesus. So it's pretty cool. Come and join us. May 1st and 2nd. May 1st and 2nd in Indy, right? Yeah. So here's our YouTube channel also. And there's what, 178 videos in here and such good content. That's fantastic. Now, Matt, I'm going to ask you to tell us more about it because you're the guy coordinating all this, doing such a good job 
for the people through discipleship.org. And, and I know you work hard at it and do a great job. So tell us what you got here, man. Sure. So we have the current podcast that season that's going up right now. And that's just been really great. I mean, these are one of the things I love about discipleship.org is that these are practitioners. So like, if you see anybody on here, their name is on here, their face is on here. Like these guys actually really make disciples. They're not just talking about it. And I just, I think that's I made a decision several years back. I need to hang out with practitioners, not just theor theoreticians. Yeah. Well, we made a decision to the best of our ability. You know, we, we all fall short. I fall short in my disciple making abilities. I've got distracted by a crisis situation this week, for example, and I'm not a, attending to my small group the way I need to. So, you know, as I speak of this, I don't want to act like some of us have it all together. I don't have it all together. But what we try to do at discipleship.org is one of the filters, if we're going to ask you to speak for us, is that you're actually practicing what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And just, I mean, everything in here, you know, I've, I've, I've watched it all, <laughs> every single video, I think. I don't know how many people can say that, but, you know, and like, I hope more after this, go binge watch the whole thing. Just start in the first one and, you know, 170, whatever later, you'll be good. But there's some really inspiring stories in here. I mean, you've got Shadonke telling some of his stories. This story right here by Joseph Kimura is incredible. And I, I, when, I, when I watched the video of it, I thought, I know this story. It was in Miraculous Movements or one of the books. Yeah, Jerry Trousdale's Miraculous Movements. Wow, I can't believe I get to watch this guy tell that story that I read in that book. It's like moving. Yeah. You know, there's just so many, Robbie Gallaty in here, this guy named Bobby Harrington. You got Matt Markins of Awana, the CEO or president of Awana. That was a re two really great conversations. Here you have Melanie Wise and Brooke with, with a lot of kind of counseling background and dealing with trauma. Just, there's just so much in here. Talking about our teens with Andrew Jitt and Daniel McCoy, Alice Matagora, who you've already mentioned. I mean, it's just, just chock full of just really great stuff. Jim yeah. Putman, of course. Greg Ogden has written quite a bit. Greg Ogden. Yeah, heard. Greg Ogden's done a bunch. He's done I don't know how many, essentials and all that. Uh, uh, quite a few. Megan Rawlings. There's oh, Chad, Curtis Nathan, Sargent. Curtis. Oh my goodness. Yeah. The, Responsible for creating more disciple making movements around the world, probably than anybody else alive. Yeah, it's, it's an incredible. That ministry is just incredible. And people just don't don't know. They just haven't haven't heard, except y'all, you know, y'all have been highlighting that and, and he's a very much under the radar kind of guy with it, you know, just the way he operates and it's yeah. amazing. It, it makes it even more legitimate to me when you get, when you meet him and just like, wow, what a guy that God is using in this way. Here's Francis Chan and Anna Westbrook. This was kind of a series that happened a little while back, kind of walking through that theology book. That was a Pam Arlen was really good. Tony Twist. There's Orpheus, of course. I mean, Matthew Bates, he just got an award for his book, right? On the gospel. Yeah. Yeah. Matthew Bates. But let me just highlight Matthew Bates for everyone. You know, Dallas Willard, before he died, really emphasized something. And here's what he emphasized he says, the gospel that you communicate will determine the disciple you get. And what he meant by that is some people have a transactional gospel where it's like just, you know, Jesus died for you, say a quickie prayer, and you're going to go to heaven. That would be the one extreme. Or, you know, you could, you could argue there's different ways that people become nominal Christians because they make some kind of deal or some kind of baptism or something like that. Where Matthew Bates is really helpful in the disciple-making conversation is that he articulates the gospel biblically. He's one of the top New Testament scholars in our time, but he shows how Jesus' enthronement and second coming and his messiahship, I mean, his name, Jesus the Messiah, Jesus Christ, which means Messiah, how it the response that he calls for is salvation and discipleship. And Matthew Bates around three key things is really strong right now. The first is Jesus, Jesus is king and he has a kingdom. And he's inviting you into his kingdom. 
Secondly, uh, so it's the, it's the, you know, he, he, we relate to him, not just as savior, but savior and King and Lord. That's his real essence. Secondly, the gospel, the gospel is not an invitation to make a deal. It's an invitation to die to self and find salvation, which is freely offered, but which requires the gospel, requires faith, which is faithfulness. So, so the gospel itself calls for a life of devotion. And then thirdly, the third thing where Bates is really helpful is on the meaning of the word pistis or pistuo, translated faith or belief. And he shows that the word actually in its original context meant allegiance, loyalty, and faithfulness, not just trust or mental assent. It's much more encompassing. So those three things, Jesus being Savior and King, the gospel being that the saving King died, rose again, he's enthroned at the right hand of God, he's coming again to judge the living and the dead, and faith is allegiance and loyalty. Those three things are theology that undergirds sustained disciple-making, and that those biblical teachings really need to be heard today, and Matthew Bates is a good guide on those three things. And he's done it in a way that's accessible. We're just, most people could kind of pick it up and read it, and there's not a million Greek footnotes and things that are just kind of bogging you down, you know. Not that he's not scholarly, but it's accessible. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. There, there are some of these I look at, like Pam Arland, Miracles and Disciple Making. Sometimes I just need a good miracle story, like, talk, like hearing Shadake talk. Yeah. Or, that Pam Arlen tells a story or two in there. I still go back to in my mind at times when I need a little reassurance that God's, God's involved. He's working. Um, yeah, that's so you know, good, man. You want that encouragement. Watch the miracles and disciple making with Pam. It was really great. Roy Moran's two were just really, really helpful on that, making that shift and some of the, the vision and that, uh, that he had to do that and telling his story just there are several of these I just go back to Justin Long. So the ones from Justin on on movements with you and Justin between you not together, but you know understanding viral movement principles and you did what is a DMM and the seven barriers. Those are really pivotal because I even I don't know five years ago I probably had no conception of any of that. It was not in my vocabulary. The disciple making movement, the virality of it all. It was just. You know, when you start hearing that and seeing that and seeing what God is doing around the world, it's so inspiring. You're like, yeah, I want to see it just here. For I want to see it now. You know? Just for our listeners, in case you didn't know, over 1% of the entire world's population is involved in disciple-making movements. These have only been around for about 30 years, maybe 35. And like 3 to 4% of the people in China, 2 to 3% of the people in India, I mean... It's amazing, Matt. And, uh, you know, different people have different interpretations of eschatology. We, I respect that. But one of the verses that stays with me is in Matthew 24, 14, when Jesus said, the gospel of the kingdom will go to all nations, and then the end will come. And because of disciple-making movements around the world, which we can't find any clear-cut disciple-making movement right now in North America. I know there's incipient stuff, and there are churches like Jim Putman's church where it's it's fantastic reproducing disciples, okay? And, and I can give other examples of that. But like these viral disciple-making movements that just spread like wildfire, where you're planting, you know, 100 churches in five years in all these multiple streams. Well, by the next couple of years, through these disciple-making movements, there will be disciple-making works in every significant people group on planet Earth. Mm. And that's never happened. It's never happened, period. And it's about to come true. Wow. And so I find that very encouraging. Yes. As Shadake would say, in my lifetime, in my lifetime. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm so inspired by so that. So let's, let's keep working and encouraging each other to complete the task. Let's try to take as many with us to meet Jesus. Let's make disciples 
and let's be faithful disciples. And all of us can help make disciples. So yeah. discipleship.org, we, we designed it to help you. We wanted to bless you. So from blogs to eBooks to podcasts to assessments, we just encourage you to get on there, explore that material and let it bless you. Yeah, and thank you for your leadership and your vision, Bobby, pushing these things ahead and, and networking people and getting the right people in the right seats to see all this through. There's been so many people involved to create all that content. I mean, just gotta throw a shout out of thanks to everybody, every name on every. Yeah, that's right. YouTube. We thank and God. We thank God for it. Yeah. And uh, just a special word of encouragement. Thank you for all the work you do, Matt Dabbs, to help us with this. Man, glad to do it. Thank you, Bobby.